Hi, welcome to Photoshop Basic Training brought to you by 7 In this lesson, we'll be looking at the tool um, palette and the layer palette. Alright, so I believe we already know that the tool palette gives us, um, provides us with tools for editing our images in Photoshop. But I believe that what we did not know is that the tools palette is divided into four major groups of tools. And we have the selection tools, the painting and editing tools, the vector tools, and the navigation tools. Now we're going to be looking at these tools very closely in our Photoshop, and we'll be looking at how we can make use of them in our work area. Now in our Photoshop work area, we will see that the toolbar is located on the left side of our screen as a single column of icons. They are all arranged from top to bottom. Each one of these icons here gives you access to a different tool. When you click on a new one, it gives you um, it gives you a new tool and its settings in the option bar. Like we said earlier, you can drag out, you can take it, you can move it around, you can add it to this palette well here. You can drag it out, you can put it right back, making it flexible and making your work area more comfortable for you if you want to work with. And now, as we said before, it's located on the left side of our screen as a single column of icons. But this can be changed by coming right here to the top and clicking on this arrow. As you can see, it's looking a little bit more compressed. And if you like this view, you can leave it like this. But I guess we'll just um, move it back. Now, you can click on the icon to select a new um, tool, or you can click on the command key on the keyboard. Now, if you don't know the command key, you can just move your cursor slightly on top the icon. There we go. And leave it there. And then it will give you both the name and the command key. Now, each tool has its own settings in the option bar. If you select, if we take our clone tool, you can see it gives us the settings for the clone tool. If you come here and select our text tool, it gives us all the different settings for our text tool. Now, for most tools, or for most um, tools that have arrows right here at the left, at the bottom right of, our, of the icon, it gives us multiple tools as well. That is, if you click and hold down, you can see more tools will be revealed. This is what we call hidden tools, or these are what we call the hidden tools. Now, some tools can have multiple um, hidden tools within them. Like we have the lasso tool, the polygonal um, lasso tool, and we have the magnetic lasso tool. So just experiment. Anyone you see with an arrow at the right um, bottom right of it, just click and hold down, and then it will provide you with a hidden option there. And if you select it, the settings change as well. So we'll just take this back. Now, like we said earlier on, that the toolbar is divided into four major groups of tools. The selection tools, the painting and editing tools, the vector tools, and the navigation tools. Now, in this tutorial, we'll be looking at some of the tools and how to apply them to our work. Now, we have the selection tool, which is from this tool here to this one here. And each group is um, separated by a single line. Let's see if you click this. There we go, by a single line, a thin line here. And the next one is here. And this is the separation between the selection tool and the painting and editing tools. And then we have another one here separating this um, group from this group. And another one beneath. Now, we have beneath the selection tools, the painting and editing tools. Right here we have our clone, we have our brush, we have our... Uh, Okay, we have the gradient, our paint bucket. Okay, and then beneath we have the vector tools, which gives us access to our um, shape creation. You can create rectangular um, shapes, you can create OM ellipse shapes, you can create straight lines, and we have our text tool here. And then beneath we have our navigation tools that give us access to our magnifying glass to zoom in and out of our images depending on the kind of work that you are doing. And we also have our foreground and our background color. So like I said, in this tutorial, we'll just be looking at them very briefly. We may be using just um, a few tools here. 
all right i guess that's all on the two palettes next we'll be looking at the layer palette and how we can have multiple layers in it all right the layers palette is located on the right side of our screen and if you're working on an image with multiple layers depending on what you're working on or the kind of effect you're trying to get from an image it provides us with a window that shows us the various layers your image is made of most times we have multiple layers we create multiple layers to give a certain depth to our image a certain um 3d effect to our image yes it is possible from photoshop and it also shows us a drop down menu of the effects that a particular layer has so it makes um, our work easier when it comes to image editing okay so this is our layer palette and as we said before it's located on the right side of our screen so we're going to be importing an image into our active image area to illustrate how the layer palette works so come here to our mini bridge click on it and then you just drag this image or double click on it okay now you can see here we have one image with the portrait here and a photo on the wall but if you come to our layer palette you would notice that we have four different layers we have layer one we have the faculty layer we have the test copy and we have test these are the four different layers that make up this one image now the thing is you can have multiple layers or an image can have just one layer depending on the effect you're looking for now we can see that these are the four layers each one of them is a different layer and each one carries a different image or an effect that can be applied to give us the final image that we're looking for. Now, beside each layer, we have the eyeball icon and this toggles the visibility of a layer so that you can either turn a layer on or off. So let's say you have um, an image you're working on. Sorry, let's put that back. You have a layer you're working on and it seems to be hidden behind another image. You can just come to the layer palette and toggle that layer off and as you can see that you cannot see the layer behind it or beneath it so we'll just drag this back here and you can just do the same for other layers depending on what you're working on you can toggle the background off you know turn on the main image or the new one so you can just play with them and just get um, the effect you're looking for so with this you can be able to see layers that are beneath it and in the layers palette you can drag layers above other layers for example the floor faculty layer is found beneath layer one and it is found above the test copy which is our background we can drag this above the law faculty and what it does is it places this layer above the law faculty layer beneath the layer one and as you can see because it is above the law faculty layer it has hidden the image that was found on this layer if we just drag this one above it again you can see it has brought that layer above it so if you're working on an image and you want to provide a sort of 3d effect you can just play with the, um, the arrangement of the layers on the layer palette and then you'll be able to get what you're looking for so if you want to create some depth you can make an image big and another one small another one really tiny and then just play with the arrangements here now each layer has a layer thumbnail which is just a um, small image of what the main image looks like and beside layers that have an effect on it we have what we call the layer effect which is signified by the FX now if you click on the arrow it provides you with a list of all the effects that have that the layer has for example our law faculty which is this image here has two effects on it it has the drop shadow which is found here and the stroke which provides the frame for the edges so let's just toggle this off and you click on that it shuts off the shadow and if you click on the stroke it shuts off the stroke and as you can see it's just a plain image here but by applying this to it effect it makes it look like a picture on the wall or you could just toggle the main effect here and then everything else just goes off So you can duplicate a layer to create a new layer or you can just create a new, layer, a new layer by coming down here to the create new layer icon that is found at the bottom of the layer palette and when you click it, it creates a new layer. 
but it creates a layer above the selected layer. So if this is the selected layer and we click on create new layer, it creates a layer above the selected layer. So let's just delete these. You can delete them by clicking on the delete icon right here. Okay. And now for an image, you can reduce the opacity, which is controlled by this opacity here. You can just click this and drag the slider to the left to reduce it or to the right to increase it. So if you have an image and you want it to appear faint or you want to provide an effect where you have two images that are similar and the one in front wants to be, uh, maybe one in front, you want it to be more um, clearer than the one behind, you can just reduce the opacity of the layer behind it. So it's the opacity that controls that. Or you could just play with the blending modes. Now what the blending mode does is that it changes the way a layer relates with the other layer on the layer palette. So what happens here, if we come here, the default is normal. But if we choose something like exclusion, as you can see now, it has changed the way this layer, layer one, relates with, lay with the law faculty and the test copy on the same layer palette. Now it has given us this inverted image look. You can come here, you can choose um, soft light, but it appears as if there is nothing, but if you look closely, you can still see part of his hair here. You could choose um, hard light. You can see the blending mode changes the way the layer relates to other layers. So you just experiment and just keep choosing different um, blending modes until you come up with something that really suits the work that you're working on. Okay. And then right here above, we have what we call the layer palette menu. From here, you can create new layers. You can duplicate a selected layer or delete a selected layer. And then from here, you can also create a group. Now, this is very interesting. In case you're working on an image that has lots of layers on it, what you can do is you can create a new group and group similar images in one folder. So let's click new group. It provides us with this window here. And then you can give it a name. Let's call it um, images. Okay. So we'll just leave these other options the way they are. We're just illustrating and click OK. Now, what, is, what you can see here, it has given us a folder. Now, you can either do it that way or just come down here and click on the Create Folder icon. Now, what you can do is, if you have similar images that need to be grouped together, you can just select them and then drag and drop into the folder. And then you can see it provides a drop-down menu. So it makes your environment more comfortable and more cleaner to work with. Okay. So this has been how to use the layer. This has been Photoshop basic training brought to you by 7tutors.com. Bye.